you know every other day would be a good a good brand for like <laughs> for 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 a very strong cigar oh, this way it's like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's like you can't smoke this every day but you can smoke every other day you know we're, gi- we're giving you ideas over here <laughs> and for me we need like the every hour cigar <laughs> yeah that's more like it you are tuning in to the cigar guys podcast where aficionados and newcomers alike gather to explore the vast cigar universe. Meet your host, Alexander Gonzalez, Mark Nikolai, his big little brother, Zachary Nikolai, and Jared Burroughs. So sit back, light up, and let's get the conversation started. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. All right, guys, we're here at Cigar Hustler in Deltona, Florida, one of the longest cigar shops in the area. Great humidor, actually. They got a lot of cigars here. But more importantly, they got the basis cigar here. So make sure you come and pick up some basis cigars here at Cigar Hustler. They got a bar. They got nice seating. Uh, We also have a cut and light here on March 15th, which is a Friday. So make sure you put that in your calendar and come see us there. All the cigar guys will be here. We'll be smoking base of cigars, you know, having some drinks and everything like that. So we'll see you there, but make sure you come in the meantime. Check these guys out, say hello, tell them the Cigar Guys sent you. All right, thanks for tuning in to another episode of The Cigar Guys. If you are joining us for the first time, make sure you subscribe so you can stay updated when we upload new episodes. If you have been with us for a while, thank you for your support, welcome back. But we are here with the usual suspects. We've got, of course, Mark Nikolai. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm doing all right. We got Jared Burroughs. How's it going, Alex? Fantastic. Great, Great to be back. Great to got, see you, you again. You guys are so nice today. That's crazy. Zachary Nikolai as well. well you know, someone's got to be nice. You were a little on edge earlier. So. I'm always on edge, so, you know, it's whatever. But we have a special guest joining us today, all the way from Esteli. And he's going to be talking to us about his cigar brand. So go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, guys. Uh, so my name is Andres. Uh, uh, I own uh, or co-own a brand called Everyday Cigar Day. Uh, I am uh, based in Esteli, Nicaragua. That's where we make our cigars and then obviously distribute them or sell them out of uh, in the U.S. And, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to... Um, Having a chat with with you guys and just, you know, answering the questions. Of course. Yeah. So real quick, I'm going to go around. Uh, I am smoking the Barber Pole cigar. Zach is also smoking the Barber Pole. And then we have uh, Jared is smoking the Maduro. Maduro. Of course. Jared always smokes the Maduros. And then you got the Habano, Mark? I got the Habano. Yeah, correct. Very nice. So we're kind of trying a bunch of different stuff. No one wanted to smoke in Connecticut, but that's okay. Uh, I, I will ask the first question though, which wrappers did you use for the barber pole? Barber poles got a uh, mix of Connecticut and, uh, Habano. Very nice. Very nice. So introduce, uh, the viewers to your product. Cause we talked a little bit about it. It's a very unique business model. It's a business model that not, I, that's, I'm, I haven't heard of it until you mentioned it to me. Uh, so go ahead and introduce Every Day is Cigar Day and how the business model works. So Every Day is Cigar Day is a direct-to-consumer brand. Um, it was set up, obviously, purely because uh, we don't really have a physical presence in the U.S. Uh, and also we wanted to obviously offer a, a slightly a kind of a, a different... Uh, Different approach, different different product, different uh, different way we sell it to to the end consumer. Um, so uh, by obviously selling it directly to consumer, obviously we bypass quite a few markups along the way. So uh, people are, are paying for the cigar without the wholesale or retail markups on there. So you literally buy it from the people that actually make the cigars. That's very uh, unique. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, we, we, we make the cigars here in Esteli, we, we ship them ourselves, we uh, import them ourselves into the U.S., and then uh, we do have a warehouse that manages all of our stock and gets shipped, uh, all the stock shipped out from a uh, warehouse in Arizona. 
Oh, and we nice, yeah. basically, obviously, the website's built by us. It's all marketed by us. If you check out all the social uh, media outlets, uh, all the pictures there uh, are done by me. So we 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 control the full process of it. And uh, the good thing about it, people can uh, the, who buy the cigars, they can actually, if if they get in touch with us, they actually speak to the people that own the brand, which you don't really get with many other brands that's very cool yeah so uh i know that we got sent the box the sampler box of 16 toros and the right. msrp on that is what remind me uh toro is 89.99 right i think so so you do the math i mean you're paying yeah. what on average i you know, looking through your products, I think it's anywhere between four and six uh, dollars a cigar. Yeah, that is correct. Yes, Which, I mean that is a great price, and it kind of fits your motto because this would be a good everyday stick for people to smoke. <laughs> well, people people actually believe it or not, they 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 kind of uh, you get mixed reactions because people are are seeing the prices and they think it's just too cheap, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But yeah. The reason it's cheap is because we sell it direct to consumer. So as I said, you know the the additional markups are just not there. So we sell the cigars at the at the price what what it, it, it supposed to be, right? Right. Well, you know, if anyone complains that it's too cheap, you could just tell them, well, I could charge you double. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't but, have to be that. Obviously, cheap. because of the mo because model is so unusual, model really. I mean, no one really. I mean, what other stores do you know that actually make and sell cigars direct to consumer? No, yeah, none. And there is a very, it, it's a very new market, you know, uh, that you're getting into. I mean, we've seen it before with like appliance direct, you know, direct with, a, you know, with appliances, direct stuff being sent to you. You're cutting down the cost. Uh, but that's in right. the cigar industry, you know, yeah, that's something that, you know, needs to, you need to do like a lot of informality informing be, yeah yeah informing people thank you well you that's exactly what we're doing here today and you know it, it's all about spreading the message and, and and getting people uh to know this kind of model but uh, as i said it's 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 kind of uh you know we don't really have a physical presence in the u.s so that means you know that there, there isn't a person that can go door to door from lounge to lounge uh, you know and, and and ask people to stock your product and hence why we've just taken a route we've taken and and but we believe you know we also have the edge in the industry where we offer direct to consumer and 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 that obviously all these savings are passed on to the to the end user and uh, i mean probably not many doing it because people just don't live in nicaragua like i do yeah. <laughs> very true uh, and you have um quite a variety uh we mentioned the uh, four different wrapper variations that you offer. Sure. Um, and there's also plenty of different size variations as well. I think, what is it? Is it eight different sizes? So we started the business uh, with uh, our core line, which is an everyday is well, everyday cigar. Uh, so that's what we, we kicked off from. Uh, and obviously that comes in, in four wrappers, which is Connecticut, Habano, San Andres, Maduro, and then a Barb Pole. And all, all the varieties also come in seven different sizes. So that's our, mm. our, our core line that we started off from, which is basically a white line. And then we will be adding the additional ones, which ne next one coming up will, will be the silver line, which uh, a much more premium offering. Um, obviously, we will be sourcing uh, cigars also from different factories or when we come across some 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 you know, rare finds like the one I'm smoking right now. Uh, people have been asking for Lanceros for God knows how long, and then suddenly these popped up. He's been rolled about three years ago, and um, uh, we, we found a, a stock of these, and, and, and person just wants to sell it, and, and these are so damn good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, every time... Uh... I really don't feel like selling these, but we'll probably <laughs> have to do that. Uh, yeah, especially when you're in the cigar industry, you know that there's a specific group of uh, people, a percentage of people that are diehard Lancero fans, and they say, when are yeah. you going to release a Lancero? We want a Lancero. 
Uh, and I think it's great to offer. The only unfortunate part is that it hasn't really, it, it doesn't have as much attention from the general market. But I mean, yeah. when you smoke a Lancero, it's a fantastic experience because that, you know, you get more wrapper uh, to filler ratio, you get more flavors out of it, as you know. I mean, that, that's like well, you I said. I guess the trouble is with the Lanceros is just uh, people don't like making them because of the shape of it and, and because the, the, a lot of the time you just, the construction is very, very, very difficult to get right. Right. And, and and there isn't that many available for that reason, but you know it's it's very rare to find a really really good Lancero, and that's why. But I can tell you now, this is phenomenal. <laughs> so why didn't we get sent any of the Lanceros? You know, yeah, like, I'm, I'm because too. because he's smoking them all. That's why. <laughs> well, because they because they all still here. We're still waiting for the packaging, and uh, we're still waiting on a few things to. Uh, waiting for the business partner to come over to Nicaragua as well, so he needs to smoke them. I mean, I, I, I'm already going through probably 50 of them, so <laughs> you better come quick before they run out. Exactly, yeah. Tell us, too, a little bit about um, how you personally got started smoking cigars. What's your you know background story on that? So, um, the first time I smoked a cigar was in 2018. I used to live in, live in London. Um, in my previous life, I, was, uh, uh, I used to be a, a concierge. I used to run concierge teams in four or five star hotels in London. And then um, one, one day uh, I was invited to a cigar tasting event, uh, uh, like a pairing event with a, with, a, with, a, with a champagne, I believe. And I smoked my first Cuban and it just completely blew my mind. And, uh, you know, I just... just just fell in love with the leaf so much that you know I dropped what I was doing and just just decided to get into the cigar industry. Uh, you know, at that time I just knew nothing about cigars, and then you know it's, uh, but it's just just don't know. I just wanted to find out everything there is to know about it, and then uh, yeah, uh, I ended up being invited to a trip to Nicaragua um, with, uh, by. Uh, a friend of mine, good friend of mine called Roy Somers, he's a managing director for Davidoff UK. Oh, yeah. Uh, and he was organizing an 11-day trip to Nicaragua. And then, yeah, we just came. And on that trip, I met my uh, business partner, Paul. Uh, Paul is uh, from England as well. Uh, but he's, he's based in the U.S. And, uh, you know, he's been to cigars for a long time. And we met on that trip. And, it, yeah, just, just immediately clicked. And... Yeah. Uh, after that, when we came back uh, uh, to UK after the trip, uh, it, it was it was uh, you know the first lockdown, eight months uh, of locked in the house, and then uh, the second lockdown was coming up, and you know we met with Paul, and just Paul said, you know, you 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 really want to get into the cigar industry, you know, so. You know, probably would would be a good idea for you to, instead of sitting through the second lockdown, why don't you just go to Nicaragua again, spend three to six months, you know, learn a bit of Spanish, learn a bit of tobacco, and then you know you just come back after after the lockdown is finished, and then you know you know you're gonna get yourself into the cigar industry somewhere in the UK. You know, at at the start it was sounded like a crazy idea, but you know I slept on it, and then I'm like, well. I've got nothing to lose, really. <laughs> yeah, like what else are you going to do during lockdown? I'm, yeah. I'm divorced, have no kids. You know, second lockdown coming up, and I'm like, nah, I'm going to just sit here. So, yeah, I go on a plane, came to Nicaragua, and then, yeah, never left. <laughs> it's been three years now. Oh, wow. So, I'm assuming you like it. <laughs> I absolutely love it. You know, I was just sick paying, you know, full retail, you know. Uh, 20, 20 to thirty dollars a stick in the UK, so I just moved closer yeah. to the source. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was in the UK um, this past December, and man, it is killer. Those prices out there, it's you know, I, I was getting it's, it's Cubans insane. for thirty, forty dollars, and those were cheap. Yeah, that uh, thirty, forty. I, I went back to UK uh, last August, and uh, yeah, I looked at some menus in in in, in those. Places that they sell them, and the Cubans are just insanely expensive right now. It's absolutely crazy. So, how long have you officially been in business then? 
Well, since I mean, if, well, depends depends where you measure it from. <laughs> from the time I smoked the first cigar, or from the time we started selling the cigars as such. Or, I mean, I've been here for three years. Uh, obviously, from from arrival, uh, I met the the the, uh, the the previous factory owner Roniel, and then you know we just started working together. I started spending time in the factory there. I was helping the factory out, and then started uh, you know. Uh, getting clients for the factory so yeah I mean I'd say three years like working in the industry so is it just you and your friend that started just the both of you yeah and, Paul uh, and I just yeah there's a there's a long story uh, of, of, of us obviously we met on the first trip and then he came back to visit uh, me in Nicaragua and then he fell ill he nearly died here in Nicaragua, so we had to bust him out of the hospital, bring him, bring him back, you know, from from wow. from the dead, and that kind of created a bond between us, where we decided, you know, what, well, and both of us really, really love cigars, and I'm here, uh, and so we should we should come up with with our own brand as such, and that's it, you know, and that's so, how Every Day was born. So you both met in Nicaragua, or you met yeah. in London. Well, we met on the on the first trip to Nicaragua, and then we just kept contact while oh, nice. it was uh, in London. Yeah, I love the name. So, how'd you come up with it? Well, every day cigar day is. Um, I mean, it, it, before it came a before it came a brand, I, I just created. When, while I was in London, obviously, I used to smoke a lot of cigars, and rather than posting. Uh, you know, all the cigar content on my personal Instagram, I just decided to create a separate one. Hmm. And because I was having a cigar every single day, I, I just, <laughs> what am I going to call the Instagram account? Every yeah. day is cigar day. And then once we decided that we're going to create a brand, uh, we sat down and we just thought of the names because my initials AP, his initials PA. So we just thought we're going to play with the letters and, and, and do that kind of thing. But I said, listen, I mean, that page has already been up there for for a while you know there's quite a few followers and the brand kind of fits of what we're trying to do you know direct to consumer everyday cigars and i said why don't we just turn that into a brand and we just both agree that it's a go ahead it's pretty funny when you hear uh all the stories about how people get started and a lot of the stories end up being something along the lines of you know it all just fell into place. Like there wasn't really a plan put into place in the beginning, mm -hmm. but step by step, it started coming together. So kind of like you said, you had the Instagram account for your personal use. And then you said, well, let's just turn it into a business account. So that's like the start of everything kind of coming together. And it's just the things that we've gone through together. It just kind of uh, brought us closer. And then we just kind of uh, said, look, both of us, I just, love smoking cigars and when we get together we we seriously we just chain smoke that stuff he brings cigars mm -hmm. i've got cigars and we're just mm -hmm. like on 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 seven to ten a day easy it both of us. and 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 it just this only makes sense there yeah only seven to ten <laughs> <laughs> he's trying and to limit himself <laughs> okay. i mean yeah seven a day that's good jared you got to catch up yeah, you're, you're only at five. Well, that's 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 <laughs> never mind. If once once you go to the factory and you know you do <laughs> new blends and you try the raw tobacco and mm. uh, yeah, it just uh, then you just lose the count. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, you say, well, look, look, it's my job. I have to smoke this many cigars. Well, so, somebody <laughs> has to, try to test test the tobacco, test the test the cigars. Yeah. Exactly. So basically, you said you were there for three years. So you had, I mean, let's say. I, what two years of uh, experience or two years of building the business before you officially launched? You said you launched about a year ago officially. Yes. So we we, we started. Yeah, I mean, officially we launched and picked the the, the most random date because everything kind of fell into place because we were we were setting up the business. It took us probably I don't know eight nine months. And, and then everything was ready on the 13th of February. And then we decided we're not going to wait. And we just launched it on the Saint Valentine's Day <laughs> last year, on the 14th of February. We just said, you know what? No time to waste. Let's do it. 
Yeah. And I, I do want to say that uh, I think your uh, box is very nice. It's very cool. It's got like a cigar leaf around it. Uh, who came up with that? Uh, I kind of sketched it up and then with a bit of the help of, um, of a designer, he, he kind of put it together. And we wanted to keep it simple, you know, everyday cigars. Obviously, uh, wooden boxes is, is, is additional cost and, yeah. and, and yeah. because it's an everyday, everyday kind of cigar. So we just wanted to keep it, keep it simple. Had it made up, you know, and yeah, I think I think it looks really good. Yeah, it's very nice. It's sleek and uh, you know black, but it's also got the like Mark said. I mean, the tobacco leaf on it, which is like you know mm -hmm. the fine details. It's very nice. And yeah, like you said, I mean, it's going to be a lot more affordable than having to get a wooden box. But I think yeah. too, I mean, for the business model, is perfect. You get your your shipment in, you get the sampler pack, or you get yep. you know whatever ones you want to order. I also like too. You put the the name on the cellophane. That's very unique too. It is. Uh, we wanted to. We, we so got used to smoking the cigars because, uh, as you can imagine, here in Esteli, is uh, you know everyone walks around with the cigars, the new blends. They always give you cigars, and none of it is banded. You know, so we just kind of always look at the wrapper and 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 and, and let the wrapper talk talk the talk. Yeah. Uh, is it great for the social media? It's not. People are like showing off the bands and what they smoke. Uh, but we, again, wanted to keep it simple and just kind of kept the bands off. Uh, not for the cost of it, really, but it's just we wanted to, people to appreciate what it, what it just looks like and just enjoy. The cigar bands, it, it just makes you judge the cigar before you even light it, really. No, that's very yeah, true, true, yeah. I mean, you can have a great quality band and the cigar might not taste good, but then you could have a band that's, you know, very minimalistic and the cigar would be fantastic. Yeah. So that, that's when the marketing comes into play. Exactly. And I mean, uh, saying that the first batch was without bands, but everything else following is going to have the band and some, ah. of the, some of the cigars we already have uh, packed. The second batch is already coming with the bands. Can you? Uh, it, 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 it does help, to, to be honest. Yeah. Can you uh, give us a little sneak peek on the camera, what the band's going to like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. He beat me with that question. The next question I was going to ask is, you know, will your server line have bands or any of the future lines? So The premium, yeah. Yeah. Moving forward, all the cigars are going to have bands. Nice. And I will say, even though this is an inexpensive brand, um, it feels premium. It feels very premium, like the, with the box and the cigar has great yeah. construction. Yeah. So. Oh yeah, I like that. It's the same everyday logo. Uh, the core yeah. line is gonna be in white. Obviously, the silver line is gonna be silver uh, writing, and then we're also gonna have the gold line, which mm. is which is which is the the, the 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 most exciting part. Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, like Mark, like you said, uh, the construction is very good. I've got a nice ash going on here. Uh, it's not a flaky ash either. It's very well put together. Uh, the draw is good. The burn's good. So it's definitely high quality. So the price does not, you know, necessarily for most people, I guess, it's not reflective of a cheap cigar. It's an inexpensive cigar, but it is a high quality cigar. Well, yeah, it's it's. I mean, the price is the 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 is. Uh, it's a premium product. It's a long filler cigar. Mm -hmm. It's all the tobaccos that we use in all the other blends. The wrappers are all exactly the same as used in all the all the uh, also uh, ultra pre premium. So there's there's nothing cheap about it. The reason is is the price. What it is is because it's we skipped a few yeah. steps in terms of this uh, selling. So cigars direct. Cigars, we're the real cigars direct. <laughs> what's, what, what's that website called? The bundles direct or cigars? What, what is it direct? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> There's so many of them. Yeah. But yeah. Um, so and two with you know anyone like you said earlier, anyone that can you know says oh the price is cheap or whatever. Uh, your new lines, the you know the silver and the gold. I'm assuming they're going to be a little more pricey, so they could you know they could buy those. Yeah, definitely. I mean the the the. The silver line, the, the the first blend is gonna be our blend. The, the, we just uh, kind of putting it together. That's uh, that was supposed to be ready, but uh, we had a bit of a delay because one of the materials uh, wasn't actually up to scratch and uh, what we needed. So we have to source it again and find it. But it's almost finished. Uh, so we're gonna hopefully um, release that 
Well, it's always uh, it's always year. something. Sometimes something always year, comes up. Uh, the, the thing uh, is, the trouble is, in, in this business, you just can't rush things. It's not something that you can, you know. Now we've got it. We just put it together, ship it off, and then that's it. No, the cigars is just you need to roll it. You need to try it. You need to g give them a rest. You need to you need to test it again. You see if it's right. If it's not right, do it again. And it, it's just the, the process is uh, 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 really just long. You yeah. know, it's very need a lot of patience. Well, like you said too, um, you know you can't rush it because too. Let's say you rush a product. And it's not up to par. It's not you know the, the quality you want. If someone tries that cigar and it's bad quality, that may stop them from trying your product ever again. First time exactly. impressions. Correct. Correct. So you want to make sure that once once it's done and, and yeah, make sure it's it, it's hundred percent. Well, you know, handmade product probably will never be hundred percent, as we all know. But right. uh, you know, get it to 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 a hundred as, as as close as possible. But, you know, we've got, we're in the right hands to do it. So, yeah, there's interesting um, things going on. I was based at the, at the other factory, uh, you know, and, and now we're, uh, if, if people thought that our uh, story you know, wasn't crazy enough, now it's gone even crazier because we are in the process of actually um, opening our own factory. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. So, hopefully, you know, this year at some point, uh, I've got, we've got a new factory partner. His name is Steven Hernandez, uh, and, and and yeah, we're gonna call it Tabacalera Hernandez, and uh, we'll see how it goes. That's awesome, man! Very exciting, I'm sure. Very. Also, we've been actually um, just last week went to see some uh, land, uh, you know, for growing tobacco. Land is not really um, readily available around, especially around here in Esteli, because. Mm. You know the big guys got it all right yeah uh, you know you're struggling to buy an uh, or, or rent a, an acre or two uh but we're now uh, i've got a i've got a friend of mine that's been uh inherited a lot of land that was used for uh for farming mm. uh, and, and he always wanted to get into the growing the tobacco but he just said uh, you didn't have the right people to do it with and and now that you know we're off to do our own thing and we're he said, "If you guys want to use the land, then uh, here we go." Oh, very so cool. we're gonna, uh, I'm gonna go next week, uh, dig up some soil samples, get them tested, see what the soil is like. Yeah. But I mean, the farm looks incredible. We've got a, uh, a over a hundred year old farmhouse that you know, if if we are going to use it, then we we'll, might make it into a kind of a guest house and bring people in. And yeah. It's very exciting. It is exciting, yeah. And, uh, and uh, you bring up a good point too, because you know not only is the land so limited, but the amount of land you can actually use for you know cultivating tobacco is even more limited. Um, and like you said, you know you got to do some tests and make sure that the land and the soil is going to be good for growing cigars, uh, because you know just because you have land over there doesn't mean it's going to be suitable for growing a good yeah. product. Exactly. Uh, but I mean the location of it. Everything is just uh, yeah, and it's a uh, uh, tobacco or anything on on most of the the actual uh, site. Uh, nothing's being grown at all. So what's it, it's it's what's called the virgin land. Mm. So it's never been used for the tobacco growing. Uh, so it, it should be extremely extremely rich. Oh, very cool. We'll see. That's that's in the next few weeks. We'll 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 find out more and. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably, we'll probably, in any case, we might just grow a, a small patch, and then uh, process the tobacco and see what it tastes like, and just yeah. take it from there. Nice. So next podcast will be at the farm. Exactly. That's what I was going to mm. say. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Set up in the guest house. You know, get the podcast going. Uh, update on your progress. That'd be fantastic. I mean, it seems too like you're moving pretty quickly which is a good thing i mean this business can take some time but the progress you're moving at you know it seems like you're doing great well when you set your mind to it you know sky is the limit you know and i came here for tobacco and that's what i'm doing mm -hmm. day in day out and i absolutely love it you know it's just a testament that you know if you're not born in a tobacco family and well it's still possible if you want it mm -hmm. bad yeah. enough very uh, true. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you're going to be in this industry too, you gotta 
you gotta love it. This is a very, very hard industry to be in if you don't enjoy what you're doing. <laughs> oh yeah, you have to you have to love it. But no, not only that. Obviously, it helps that I actually physically move to this country. You know, as 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 someone told me, you know, a lot of the brands out there, they just essentially are marketing companies because they don't make their own cigars. Somebody else makes them, and they just put their own band and sell them, which is great, but. What I'm doing is I am, I'm actually getting my hands dirty on the ground here. I live in Esteli, I uh, breathe Esteli, and, you know, doing when, what, what, what is necessary to come up with the best thing that can be. So how is it over there? How do you like living in Esteli? Um, interesting. <laughs> um, Definitely. Yeah, at, the beginning, at the beginning, you got to, there's been... You know, when you come from London and especially five star kind of uh, hotel background where everything's, you know, like a military camp and, you know, mm -hmm. you, you're trying to the, to the speed that everything moves and gets done. And, 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 and yeah, in here is a bit more relaxed, very the more relaxed. Year, I was I was I was first year I was struggling. Honestly, I was I was honestly ripping my hair out. You know, if you need to get something done it's just like tomorrow, tomorrow tomorrow everything's tomorrow and it's like no there's no tomorrow but now when i say tomorrow well it is what it is <laughs> we'll do it tomorrow yeah it's it's crazy the culture difference you know like the timing you know uh my dad's from venezuela for example and he always told me that you know if dinner was at six you're probably eating at 8 30 or 9 and that's just exactly. how it is in south america <laughs> you gotta get used to it. For me, it was it was it was difficult at the beginning, but yeah, yeah, you get you get used to it, right? For sure, I'm sure it was. I mean, especially you know, a lot of European countries, just the culture there. It's very, it's like right now. You know, you order yeah. your coffee, your coffee's already there. It's everything exactly. is like really uh, fast paced. Exactly. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I know, whenever we go to like Kosovo or Albania. You know, over there, it's a lot more relaxed. You know, the people will take a two-hour lunch. <laughs> you know, they'll go get coffee. It's like, oh, we got to go, go run these errands. It's like, okay, but we're going to stop at the coffee shop first. And then you go <laughs> sit You sit down for an hour, two hours, you know, going through the day. And then, yeah, it becomes into tomorrow. Because that's yeah. Eastern Europe for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Eastern <laughs> Europe. Yeah, yeah. You go to the West, and it's a little, you know, now. I need it now. Yeah. But other than that, you know, it's... uh. Esteli, you know, aesthetically, it might not be the most beautiful town in Nicaragua, but, you know, all, all the factories here, tobacco, and that's what I'm here, and I absolutely love it, you know. Mm. Now, how's the food? Uh, oh, really? Food. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be better uh, than England's food, you know. <laughs> pat patchy, to say the least, you know, there, there, there's few spots that, you know, we go to, but generally we do cook most of our wood at home gotcha uh, yeah you know i will say zach when i was in uh the uk the food was actually pretty good I'm not gonna lie to you I, you know it breaking the stereotypes <laughs> mm. you, um, you people make I fun mean, of the breakfast London, the, breakfast the, the, really the variety of the restaurants and obviously the quality of them is is, is just endless mm -hmm. here it seems like uh yeah yeah i mean about towns obviously they've got uh, better culinary scenes in the city is a bit, you know, limited, but, you know, it's improving slowly, slowly. Yeah, I mean, that that's really like, I mean, even in America, you go to a small town, right? You're only going to have, you know, five, six places to go eat. Yeah. But, you know, where we live, you know, I could walk across the street and I got five restaurants I could choose from to go eat, you yeah. know, and, and with every culture around the world, you know, I just pick yeah. one. Um so yeah, I could, I, I could kind of see where you're coming from. Do you do you cook a lot of like food from England over there? Is that usually where you cook? Not or? really. Well, I'm actually I'm actually I was born and raised in Lithuania, so I'm not oh, from okay. England. Oh okay. Dang. Uh, I moved to England at the age of 19, and then I was in England for what 18 years in total before moving to Nicaragua. So I'm actually Lithuanian. 
Oh, wow. Oh, cool. So every, you know, 18 or 19 years, you're moving to a different place is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've got, I've got another 15 to be here before I go to Bahamas. <laughs> oh, okay. And then we're going to figure out how to grow tobacco in the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like nah, I'm retiring over there. That's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll probably just be, you know, on a beach smoking my cigars. Exactly. Yeah. No, Someone else can run the company. I'll yeah. smoke the rest of the cigars that we got. <laughs> <laughs> just give me all the Lance arrows. I'll smoke them. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> so, a uh, question that we normally ask our guests is, you know, besides obviously your own product, what are, uh, you know, three cigars off the top of your head? from other brands that you're were kind of like your go-to cigars like you know you go into the shop and you look for this cigar like uh, this cigar is you know one of my favorites uh probably um number one choice for sure and uh, uh anything Pl- placencia makes mm. i'm a really really big fan of it uh, and obviously nesta's been a, a big inspiration of of my cigar journey mm. uh on a first trip, uh, obviously we spent the whole day in his factory riding his horses here in Esteli, and he was just kind of reassurance that I'm on, I'm on the right path, and and, and you know the, the the new new direction in life, and that's what I want to do. And he he's just such a phenomenal person, but not only that, he's a phenomenal tobacco grower mm-hmm. and the cigar maker. The yeah, I mean, Placencia Cigar, and especially Alma de Fuego. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it, it's, it just stands out for me. Obviously, Padron. I really like Padron as well. Mm, yeah. Um, and probably a third one. Huh? Oh, yeah, I mean, Oliva. Melanio. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. They make it that was the that was the that was the last cigar I smoked in the in the UK before I left. Mm. Uh, yeah. yeah. Of those did two. I just buy a placentia like yesterday? I was gonna say the one. Yeah, the uh, the fuego as well. Yeah. Did you did you mention fuego? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's number one. Nice. All right. Yeah. So, what do you think was better, Jared, the uh, Lancero version or the um, torpedo version that you had? I didn't smoke it yet. Oh dang. Okay. Never mind that. Always the Lancero version is always better. <laughs> that's what I would say, yeah. You know, it's very hard to find a variation that's better than a Lancero. Yeah, I feel like the people that smoke cigars a lot tend to prefer the Lanceros. Yeah, absolutely. Just a thinner ring gauge in general. Yeah. I do prefer smaller uh, ring gauges as well. I don't know. I used to smoke a lot of Gordos, and, you know, but it's just kind of as I'm progressed. Mm-hmm. Smoking, I, I tend to choose Toro is kind of my optimum size. I like right, I like yeah. the fifty two or then slightly smaller ones. Yeah, I'm 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 really liking those. Yeah, you go through phases too. I mean, obviously, mm. when you first start smoking, you go for something more traditional. Maybe it's a robusto or a Toro, so you're kind of in the middle. Yeah. Uh, then you progress. You go maybe smaller ring gauges. You get the Coronas and the Lanceros, and then sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I recently went through a phase where I was, you know, shooting for like fifty six or fifty eight. Just because that experience is a lot different than what you're used to smoking. Yeah. The Gordos. <laughs> I agree. Not quite that big, but, you know, almost there. You're working way up. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that's the beautiful thing about, you know, cigars is that there's so many different variations of the same product. The different wrappers, the different sizes. It's just, yeah. it's almost endless and people are still, you know innovating this industry to this day there's always something new that's coming out yeah couldn't agree more yeah i mean new business models direct to consumer that's that's very that's really not a popular thing i was going to ask you too do you know of any competition that's doing this as well or have you found anyone else that's doing you know basically farm to consumer uh i'm yet to find one now, as I say, I, I, I don't know of one. Yeah, so. yeah I, I've not <laughs> seen a single one. Because yeah. yeah. generally, yeah, the, 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 the most traditional route, they would get, you know, manufactured in the factory. Then, you know, that's shipped over, handed over to wholesaler. Then wholesaler will sell it to retailers mm-hmm. and then retailers and then sell it to. Uh, right. There's, there's, the bu- there's definitely plenty of middlemen in the yes. process, you know? Yeah. Even, I mean, right. even with us, with our, our brand, you know, 
like we deal with a lot of middlemen and then if we wanted to move into europe we would have to deal with another middleman just to sell for us right. because we're not allowed I to guess, you need to go through an importer you need to go through all this you know i guess there's benefits to it as well as if you hand that over to someone else i mean obviously you you, you can you can push larger volumes faster right um you know if you if you if you connect with a really good distributor you know they'll buy a, a, a bulk of your cigars in one go obviously your margins are going to be smaller uh i guess and then but then you know they'll just sell it off quicker so you know but we've just kind of decided that we're just going to stick to it and see how it goes and it's just slowly progressing progressing it's just we're now just at the phase where where we just need to promote it you know speak to the guys like you and and then tell our story because we do have an interesting one and, mm -hmm. and 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 yeah well yeah and being unique in any industry especially in this industry is definitely helpful so when people hear the story and say okay this is something that's different it's you know it's not traditional uh that helps you stand out you know everyday cigar day they ship directly from the farm to the consumer you know it's like the whole trend when uh restaurants were saying you know farm to table yeah, everyone right. was loving that so anything that makes you unique is definitely going to be a big help for promoting your products definitely you know where it comes from and you can actually talk to the people that actually make them too which mm -hmm. is you know the other the other benefit that we we offer and you know if you, if you contact us through the website or you know whoever there's always going to be me at the other end who is directly involved in actually making the actual product so that's pretty awesome too. Yeah, I mean, because too, I mean, you're contacting someone from the lounge. That's another four people that you know are in between the actual product. If you contact the and essentially, essentially, the owner of the cigar or the person that makes it can't take the direct responsibility for it. Right, right. It's the, the, just changed the hand so many times that you know, essentially, is the is the lounge responsible for that product? Right, and I how mean, well kept and how looked after because the person that made it made sure it's it, it's right. But what happened then afterwards is not yeah. really in his hands. No, that's a good point. Yeah, I mean, as far as we, the quality we, of and the, we take the direct responsibility for it because we made it and we sold it to you. Right. So anything wrong with it, then you know you come back to me. Yeah. So your time down there, have you uh, tried rolling a cigar yourself yet? Oh yeah, absolutely. I, I did try it, but yeah, I just tried it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that part is best left to the professionals, you know. No, absolutely. Yeah. I, mean, I, I I I have tried it, and I can tell you, I mean, that it's really difficult, really, to get it right. Yeah, I mean, people that don't real they don't realize that it is a very very unique craftsmanship, and it's very hard. You can't just sit down and roll the tobacco leaves together. It's not going to look and, like this, you know. Don't forget, it's extremely repetitive. So I'm the kind of person I just can't do the same thing like mm. that, just over and over and over again. But some do, right. you know, uh, and and they they obtain that. I mean, we have guys in the factory that you know been there, been rolling for like ten years, fifteen years. You know, that's what they do. They just they just magically yeah. put the right amount of tobacco in the hand, yeah. roll yeah. it up, and it's just perfect every single time. It's just incredible. I yeah. mean, but they, but they enjoy doing it too. Like I've heard people well, yeah. retire, then they'll go back into rolling cigars just because <laughs> yeah, yeah. they missed it so much. Yeah, absolutely. It's literally an assembly line, like a whole a whole factory assembly line of okay, boom, and then like you said, every time they put the right amount of leaves in, and they get so fast and so you know efficient of it. It's crazy. It's honestly crazy, you know, going to a factory and seeing all that being done. Yeah. And it's just there's, there's so many steps along the way, and you know, I can proudly say that you know I've I've done every bit of manual work involved in in making a cigar. You know, I came here to learn, so I was I was trying to do and try every single every single step. You know, and it's it's just incredible. So the you know, uh, from seed from seed to smoke, two years, and the tobacco gets handled pretty much every. If not every day, every other day, you know, it, it, it is always someone doing something with it, you know? Oh, well, it's got to be every day. I mean, that's a whole brand. So, you know, <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> you can't be going out saying every other day now. <laughs> no, 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 no. Since it's almost like uh, 6 p.m. over there, 
what number cigar are you on now? Is this number seven? Is this number eight? I, have, I honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, every other day would be a good a good brand Shh. for like. <laughs> <laughs> for 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 a very strong cigar, oh, this way it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like you can't smoke this every day, but you can smoke every other day. You know, we're gi- we're giving you ideas over here. <laughs> and for me, we need like the every hour cigar. <laughs> yeah. that's more like it. That's an idea for a cigar name too. Yeah, I mean, we know a guy that. <laughs> the moment he wakes up, he's got a cigar lit in his mouth. He's up to like 15 to 20 every day. It's absolutely crazy. Shout out to... To what? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, I, I do light up my first cigar, not as soon as I wake up, but, but pretty close. I mean, if, if I do the gym, I try not to take cigars to the gym. Yeah, yeah. But straight after when I come back, I make my first uh, cup of coffee, and, and, and that's how I start my day. Absolutely. Wait, wait, you said you tried oh, not to and, take and cigars. You haven't to tried the gym. Connecticut, but sadly, but that's, that's, that's a banger of a smoke. Dang, I really? Every Hon- single day. Honestly, I'm probably, when we all hang out after this, I'll probably smoke it next. So. <laughs> I was putting off the Connecticut, honestly, just because I'm not a huge Connecticut guy. And also, I wanted to wait to smoke it kind of earlier in the day because that's when I prefer Connecticut. But I'm actually not excited to try it. I said the same thing. I'm not a Connecticut guy until that came about. It, what, I became the Connecticut guy. <laughs> what was great about Connecticut's is when they're good, they're, they're really amazing. good. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But most of the yeah. time, it's just a Connecticut, and it's like I'm never going to smoke yeah. this again. Yeah, usually it's too light. Yeah, I definitely smoke them in the morning. That's like I don't go past Connecticut in the morning. Well. We'll see what you say when you try it. Yeah, Probably. next thing you know, you're going to get a bunch of orders for <laughs> Connecticut's in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kid you not, there is a guy that shops from our store, and he bought already 23 times. And guess one which we which he which wow, he really? bought it the like Connecticut. Connecticut. <laughs> wow, 23 times. He should have just bulk ordered it at that point. He shouldn't be. <laughs> was he in Florida or where is he located? <laughs> Somewhere in the U.S. <laughs> he can't give out that information, Jared. Mm-hmm. Mm. We still got some left. Don't worry. <laughs> it was Jared's address. That's why he was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> don't say it on here. Jared? Jared? I think that was Jared, though. <laughs> So for your silver line and your you know your gold line and the the white label and all that or the white line um, are are they going to be different variations of wrappers too or are you going to kind of focus in on one variation or how is that going to go? Uh, it depends how it pans out because uh, the silver line essentially is going to be um, either the blends we create, uh, either the uh, kind of uh, overruns that we find uh, that we deem really really good mm. uh so if 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 you know we try it with a small batch and it does well and uh if if, if people want to get more we'll see if we can do it sometimes you just find and it's kind of one off so like these lanceros uh, remaking them is uh i don't think it's gonna happen mm. uh, because it's made it, it's got a history but the sad thing is also, obviously, we won't be able to disclose the majority of the details about the cigars mm-hmm. for obvious reasons. And, uh, yeah, they're just going to be unique one-off things yeah. that are, are really, really great. And then we're just going to put our label on it. And, uh, yeah, the, 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 the cigars that we're going to create, obviously, again, um, we'll see how they do. And if we think that, you know, people really, really like them, then we can expand it or we'll just kill it off. No, you bring up a good point, too, because a lot of, um, I mean, pretty much every core line from a brand, if you want to keep that same flavor profile, you do have to tweak the blend because the blend is not going to taste the same if you keep producing it the same way for years and years and years. So, I mean, you know, Davidoff's got to change their blend every few years to keep that same, you know, flavor profile. And it's year on year, the crop is different, the taste, the tobacco, just, just, you know, maintaining exact same tobacco is difficult and it's very expensive. I mean, if you want to continue the exact same production, that means you need to stock up on the crazy amounts of tobacco and tobacco Mm -hmm. ain't cheap and it's just getting 
more and more expensive and it's not by by you know every year we're talking every month you know right. prices are always fluctuating if someone had a bad year suddenly every, that, that jumps up uh if there's you know readily available the price drops down and 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 the thing is when you're starting up is 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 obviously limited funds you can't just go in there and 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 buy uh you know 50 bales like some do you know we go we, we have to be realistic with it but you know yeah so so i'm looking at your website now when is the uh, silver and gold line brand coming out so silver line is the next one so uh we 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 almost have the blend blend finish that we want to launch first uh, but we might get if we get the lanceros first in the u.s then might be that 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 might be the mm -hmm. first launch and then from there we're just gonna keep adding the silver line and the idea with the gold line is basically to 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 collaborate with the big names in the industry or the big makers like placencia hmm. uh, maybe like aj like like someone someone really big because we do know these guys here also paul uh has some uh contacts in dominica as well hmm. we might venture off in that side but we gonna we, we will have a, a big name to make a cigar for us absolutely uh, which obviously we would say we would have a say in in in, in the type of blend that we want to make but it would be an exclusive blend done for us by that mm. big name absolutely and do you have any idea of the price difference can be between the silver line and the regular line mm. at this stage i don't know because uh, obviously everything needs to be calculated the raw materials and, and the actual cost and bring it into the us and and how much and then obviously the profit margin of the business and uh yeah the price but it's still it's still going to be lower than the rest purely for the way the business operates mm -hmm. so yeah you will get a you know 15 dollar cigar that you would buy in a in a shop it'll, it'll definitely be probably under done ten dollars with us if you uh need anyone you know to help you know try it out give some feedback <laughs> you know <laughs> Please let us know. <laughs> Absolutely. Once we launch, then we'll send you know some to try, and we can get on another podcast to discuss yeah. it and uh, you Absolutely. know tell you a bit more about it as as how it came about and uh, what what's in there. And as much as I can give out, I will I will give out. Mm -hmm. Well, like I said too, I mean uh, the progress you're moving at is very quick, so I'm sure we'll be talking again very soon, and we'll have a lot more to talk about even then. Uh, you know, whether it's the silver or the silver and the gold. Um, you know, I mean, it, uh, fantastic progress again, like, like I said earlier, it's moving very rapidly and, uh, you know, I'm sure you're very proud of the progress yeah. you're moving at. And well, definitely it's not all being, you know, flowers and bees to say the <laughs> least, you know, but, you know, we are learning, we are progressing, we are building what's yet to come. And, uh, yeah, we're, we're really, 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 really happy, you know, and it's, 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 it's just purely out of love out, out of love for the for the tobacco you know absolutely yeah and like we said i mean if you're enjoying it then you'll never stop you'll never want uh, to stop. i can't see myself doing anything else right now to be honest at all i'll be around <laughs> for a long time uh, i guess we'll have to sure. do we'll have to do plenty of podcasts in the future with this guy <laughs> that's, that's all right <laughs> Silver podcast, gold podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's gonna be a platinum line say, yeah. towards the end, right? <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. But yeah, so I guess we're gonna wrap it up here where it's about that time. I appreciate you very much for coming on and sharing your story. It's a very unique business model, it's a very unique brand. Uh so if those of you listening definitely gotta check out every day is cigar day. We're gonna put all the information in the description for you to check out. Uh, but thank you guys for tuning in and thank you again for joining us. It's yeah, been a pleasure. It's been great me. talking to you. And we'll see you guys next time. All right. Take care. Yep. See you. Take care. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Cigar Guys podcast. Make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date with all the latest episodes. Looking for short form content? Check out all our social media accounts in the description below. And now, a final word from our sponsors. Crafted for the newcomer and the connoisseur, the Besa 
embodies excellence at every level. Each draw, a journey through rich, nuanced flavors and a smooth, unforgettable finish. Base a cigar, where tradition meets perfection.